The mayhem continues, and this year, they brought friends. Annie Thor's daughter's super team looks super impressive. We'll hear from the two-time fittest woman on Earth after her team finishes strong. Norway's Navy is dominant in Europe. A new team emerges down under, and the crew from San Diego is still the master of their fate. We'll recap the entire team quarterfinals weekend next on Game Central. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Games Central Teams quarterfinal recap presented by GoWad, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games. The team quarterfinals are now behind us, and we know who will be advancing to the semifinals. Over this past weekend, we had the favorites show why they are indeed the favorites, and we had some new contenders emerge around the world. We'll have more on them here as we work our way through the show. But right now, let's take a look at your top teams from each continent, starting in Africa, where CrossFit commit Okavango. They were the only team in any continent to finish first in every single workout. KT CrossFit Kolesnikov team, unofficially right now, they are first in Asia. The games experience paying off for CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. No shock in North America, Rich Froning and company in CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. They are your number one team there unofficially right now down in Oceania. CrossFit Selwyn and it's Q21 CrossFit in South America. But your top performing team of the quarterfinals is presented by Monster Hydro, the official energy drink of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games is no shock. CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. They were absolutely dominant as they always are in these types of competitions. They set three event records. All five of their finishes were inside the top five in the world. They did get a penalty on workout number one. Taylor Williamson did not meet the pistol standard, multiple reps. And then on workout number two, they also got a two second false start penalty and still won that. In two years of quarterfinals action, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom has set six world records out of 10 quarterfinal workouts. Immediate future is training, but Semi-finals, hopefully we get uh, Syndicate, which is right in our backyard. It's one of the first weekends too, so you can kind of get that over with and start concentrating on uh, end game. Rich Horning and company will certainly be tough to beat the rest of the way, but one team that is hoping to give them a run for their money is CrossFit Reykjavik, the super team that was put together by Annie Thor's daughter this off season. Annie is entering a new phase of her career as this will be the first time that she will compete on a team. Last year, we saw her have a great showing at the CrossFit Games, finishing on the podium after taking a year off to have her daughter Freya. And Annie credits Whoop with helping her get back in top shape so quickly. A lot of people have a lot of opinions when it comes to pregnancy, training, and fueling. People were saying I was endangering my child. Everything that I read and all the doctors that I saw, they said that you should continue being active. I felt so much better, both physically and mentally, every time I trained. Definitely reached out to girls that I knew that I gone through pregnancy, that have been active. It's so important to have that support. I feel like I'm not alone. There's so many of us that go through same or similar things and we will bounce back. Things did not get off to a good start for Annie Thoros' daughter and CrossFit Reykjavik. Unofficially after day one, they were in 45th place worldwide and 12th in Europe. They had a really bad performance on workout number two. They had a problem with the synchronized burpees and some bad communication, and they plan on working on that moving forward. But they bounced back on day number two. Two event records on the second day of competition. They had four wins in Europe and also that 30th place, which is what kept them ultimately out of first place. And they got a minor penalty on workout number one and workout four for an athlete being short one rep. But Annie Thorstad and CrossFit Reykjavik are on their way to semifinals, and I was able to speak with Annie at the conclusion of those three days of competition. You guys finished right now unofficially fourth in Europe, 13th in the world. How did this weekend go in reality compared to your expectations? I definitely would want to see us higher on the leaderboard. Um, but 
I'm overall really, really happy and proud of us. There was one event that's obviously an outliner there uh, where we just made a big mistake. Uh, we definitely should have just gone faster and we could have. And we were also overthinking the standard completely on that workout. Like that's the burpee shuttle run workout. Like we had the line so that the hat was far behind the line. And we were thinking the two foot take out every single time. So like stepping together and jumping over like because it said in bold letters, we're like, we want to make sure that we do this properly. It's also the first time I compete on a team. So I wanted to make sure we were doing everything right. Um, and Yami's that way as well. When we compete in these online things, we don't want to get slammed with uh, penalties. I'm overall really proud of what we did. We did what we could on almost every single one of the events. It's just like the final event where we knew that we had to take a chance. I knew that I had to take a chance and try to go on broken. Um, on the thrusters, normally as an individual, I would look at it and be like, all right, be smart, break up the thrusters, and then you're going to be quicker on the muscle ups. My strategy did not pay off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if we're going to hit walls anywhere, I want us to hit them here. We need to start doing a little bit more of that in training so that we learn uh, what we can do when it actually matters. Going into quarterfinals, I know sleep recovery, things like that are super important to you and your team. How do you track those uh, going into training and then afterwards as well? Well, we actually, we all wear whoop. Mm -hmm. um, I've been using that for a long time now, but it was kind of funny. So Freya got sick oh, no. on Sunday a week ago. And then I woke up the day after and I had like 8% recovery on my whoop. And I'm like, my throat is really bad. I'm like really swollen. My nose is still really clogged, but I was like, this is a great way to start. <laughs> but I also know I've competed under significantly worse circumstances. I didn't have fever. There was nothing like crazy wrong with me. So throughout this weekend, I've actually been recovering more and more. My whoop score has been improving and today was my first day in the green. So I'm like ready to go. But yeah, we use, we use the whoop to track sleeping, recovery and everything. Um, and it's a really good indicator for us to know if we're, if we need like a DLO day or not. Of course, CrossFit Mayhem and CrossFit Reykjavik grabbed a lot of the attention this past weekend because of the star power that they have, but there were some other top performances around the world. And for more on that, here's Lauren Smith. Thanks, Sean. This is my top five performances of the team quarterfinals presented by Whoop. And let me tell you, the job does not get any easier. But there is a household name that stands out in workout one, putting up the best score in the world, the crew from Invictus. But it wasn't all smooth sailing, as Josh Alchama explains. So talk me through event one. What a start. Hey, it was a great start. It was a fun start. You know, funny enough that, um, that event, we did it twice. Uh, and I'll be straight up, had we have kept our original score, we may not have been in the position that we were in. And, and the only reason we, we did it twice was not because we wanted to get a better score, but we actually made a mistake. Um, and we finished the workout, watched the video back and was like, we need to fix that because we don't want to take that risk. You know, it's not worth it at, at this point in the game. So we rested for 15 minutes and said, let's go again. And we went again and we, we just all looked at each other and was like, if we're doing this, we're going harder and that's what we did and uh, it just it just proves what you can what you can achieve what was the mistake um so it was uh kicking up on the line so a few of us as we kicked up the thumb the tip of the thumb was touching the line so it was like we don't we don't want to have that and they're very strict on us at invictus which is great you know we love it so they just they watched the video back and they said it's not going to fly. We're not taking we're not taking any risks like that. So let's go again. So we were kind of considering going again the next day, um, but we were all so hyped up and, and and we loved the event that we were like we're doing it right now and and it paid off. The team that also includes Brittany Vice, Devon Kim, and Jorge Fernandez recorded an unofficial time of 8:14, a whole 12 seconds faster than CrossFit Mayhem. Looking at workout two and it's CrossFit Selwyn in New Zealand who had already recorded two top 10 finishes worldwide and two back-to-back -back continental wins. 
That unofficially put them fourth in the worldwide leaderboards. The team is led by Marnie Sykes and Madeline Schelling of the former Plus 64 CrossFit Games team. And they've combined with two young guns, brothers Luke and Ben Fowler, who have both already qualified for the semis as individuals. It was their tempo and ability to maintain that set them apart in Oceania. Following the day two leaderboard though, a familiar storyline was emerging. Fire versus Ice, CrossFit Mayhem Freedom versus CrossFit Reykjavik, tying for the best score in the world on event three. Annie Thorosdotter's team bouncing back, as Sean mentioned, from a burpee blunder. They actually flipped the workouts and took on event four first. Annie had identified it as a possible world record and they recorded the best score in the world. Unofficially, of course. You don't win the CrossFit Games in April, Carl Porter told our team. And Annie also had her own take. We were done with the clean event, so it was the partner event. And I told Lauren, I'm like, I want a world record in this event. If I was doing this as an individual, I would look at it and be like, I want to win this workout. And I know that she's really strong at these movements too. And everything was just executed exactly how it should have been. I still believe that we can shave off at least 20, 30 seconds in that event. And we have to work on tons of things and we're not ready for the games. But we're also not supposed to be ready for the games. We're supposed to be making these mistakes now and seeing the holes that we have now so that we can actually work on them. CrossFit Mayhem Independence sat second overall after day two, worldwide in workouts three and four. With only seven points difference between them and CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, oh, might we have a civil war on our hands? In our preview though, we did speak about how many world records CrossFit Mayhem Freedom might pick up over the course of the weekend. And the answer is three, recording a 30 second advantage on North America's AB CrossFit in that final workout number five, the cherry on the cake. They never finished below top five all weekend and remain the team to beat. However, there are four more months for the rest of the field to change that. Back to you, Sean. Thank you so much, Lauren. One of the most dominant performances that we actually saw this weekend was in Africa, where CrossFit Commit Okavango won all five events, five straight first place finishes for a total of just five points. That is a perfect score. And it's really no surprise because they have two members of the Eichstad Mighty Oaks team combined with two members of the Eichstad Golden Oaks. They have now formed a super team down there. The Mighty Oaks last year led wire to wire in Africa and finished with four continental wins and then a third. Cross and Commit Ogavango continues the legacy and improved all first place. Their score put them in 65th place in the world and remember Africa only gets one spot to the CrossFit Games so CrossFit Commit Okavango looks like they are the favorites to take that. The tightest race we saw at the top of any continental leaderboard was over in Asia and that's where CrossFit Yas Black and CrossFit KT Kolesnikov team were separated by just one point after four workouts. Yas had been leading up until the very end but the Kolesnikov team was able to take over the lead on event five. Yas had one first, three seconds, and a third. Kolesnikov, they saved their best for last. They finished the weekend with three consecutive continental wins, and they also had two thirds. They also had three continental wins last year. We had a team really break out down in Oceania this past weekend, and that is CrossFit Selwyn. And really no surprise that they were able to do so well because they have a pair of team veterans and a pair of brothers who did very well in the individual competition so far this year. Marty Sykes and Madeline Schelling were part of the 6-4 Army Gold team that performed so well last year down in Oceania. And Ben and Luke Fowler, the brothers on this team, have competed in the individual quarterfinals this year with Ben Fowler finishing fifth in Oceania, Luke Fowler finished 15th. Selwyn had four continental wins and they end up finishing right now unofficially fourth worldwide and Madeline Schelling said that they started the season looking to go as individuals but now they feel like they probably should go team and I think that looks like a very good choice. What are our top takeaways from this weekend? Well, Tommy Marquez is here with his top takeaways presented by Arosti. Thank you, Sean. In the words of El Jefe, I would say that we had a plethora of takeaways to choose from this weekend, but in the end, only three stood out, and there's no better place to start than the three standout teams from CrossFit Mayhem. 
on the worldwide leaderboard after the five quarterfinal tests unofficially crossfit mayhem freedom sits in first as expected mayhem independence is in third and mayhem justice sits in ninth three teams in the top nine is impressive enough but as we head towards the next round, it sets the stage for Mayhem to possibly become the first affiliate to qualify three teams for the games in one year and finish what they started in 2018 by becoming the first affiliate to have two teams on the podium at once. Now, remember back in 2018, Mayhem Freedom won and the Independence team came up just short, finishing fourth. Three teams would just be insane. Number two for me would be the heated showdown we're gearing up for down under in the Oceania region at the Torian Pro. That's after seeing the results from this weekend. Now, obviously, Selwyn was the big breakout, but you have to tip your cap to CrossFit Urban Energy and CrossFit Awaside teams that finished 7th and 11th at the games last season, respectively, and combined bring back seven of the eight teammates from last year, with the exception of Awaside, who added Laura Clifton, who finished 24th at the games as an individual last year. Very talented contenders that'll have a fair go at just three game spots up for grab at Torian next month. And finally, the European leaderboard reminded us all that all the individual talent in the world can't overcome the absence of certain elements of teamwork and chemistry. The CrossFit Reykjavik did phenomenal. They won four of the five workouts in Europe, but the one that they didn't work out to, they finished 30th and it all came down to the synchronized burpees. The Iceland team had a total of nine minutes and two seconds of working time on those synchro burpees. And truthfully, they didn't really mess up. They just had to take an extra half beat with each rep to make sure that they were in sync. And over the course of the 150 reps or so, it starts to add up. Compare that to a top team globally like CrossFit PSC, who only had a working time of 713, and it really highlights the compounding effect that seemingly minute elements of teamwork and familiarity can have when comparing teams at the highest level. That one piece of one test knocked Reykjavik down to fourth in Europe and 12th worldwide because top teams like CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue and CrossFit Nordic Original and the rest of Europe will punish you for those weaknesses. Those are my top three takeaways from this quarterfinal team weekend, but I want to hear what yours are. Be sure to drop down your top takeaways in the comments section below and tell me what really stood out to you from year two of the team quarterfinals. John? Keep in mind that all team scores right now are still unofficial, pending review to stay up to date with everything going on on the leaderboard. You can go to games.crossfit.com. We want to thank our sponsor for today's episode, GoWad, the official mobility partner of the Noble CrossFit Games, designed with one thing in mind, to help you perform at your best. You can download the app now for a free mobility test and a 14-day trial. have just one weekend left of quarterfinals action. That takes place starting on April 21st with the age group quarterfinals. It runs through April 24th. And of course, we have had plenty of competition so far this year with the Open, the quarterfinals, semifinals are right around the corner and none of that is possible without great equipment. Rogue Fitness is a company that grew out of a CrossFit affiliate and they are known for providing the best fitness equipment in the world, and we look forward to being able to partner with them for the rest of the CrossFit Games season. The first episode of Miles to Madison, our documentary series, is available now. Episode 2 gets released on Thursday, April 14th, so be sure to keep an eye on the CrossFit Games YouTube channel so you do not miss that. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland. Good luck to the teams that are moving on to the semifinals, and we will talk to you next time. Next time on Miles to Madison. How's it looking? It looks raw. So we're literally custom building a set. We're doing the blocking rehearsal for... It's not like we just show up, set up the cameras, throw on the lights and... Go! Bethany Shadburn has a slight lead now on Danielle Brandon. I constantly compare myself to where I was the year before. You're going to see Patrick and I both trying to crush each other. I don't want to overinflate my own stock, but I will crush it all. Let the games begin.